What's going on guys? I am here with my full two round NBA mock draft. That is all 58 picks of the draft. And yes, I said 58, not 60 because the Bucks and the Heat got caught tampering in free agency a couple years ago and they lost their second round picks because of it. But at this point, we've gone through the combine. We've seen the withdrawal deadline date. So guys are going back to college and prospects are fully underway with the private team workouts. So we have a really good understanding and I feel comfortable to do all 58 picks for you guys. At pick number one, the Orlando Magic get us started by taking Jabari Smith power forward from Auburn. This one is mostly off of rumors. I got to be honest, if I was the Magic, I would have them taking Chet, but every single report and rumor points to them taking Jabari Smith, and I still understand it. 6'10", shot 42% from three. He is the best shooting prospect at that size or bigger in the last 10 years, but he's also a bottom 10 prospect in two point percentage that was a top 10 pick in the last 10 years at 43% from two. And the best reason why you take him and why anyone would want to take him is because he could be fit into any single team. He doesn't demand too much on ball, but he can still be an on ball threat if you want him to. He has good defensive potential and athleticism so it's easy to see him slotted into any team and it makes sense with the magic young core and they're only going to get better the oklahoma city thunder at pick two make an easy pick and they take chet holmgren who they would have taken at number one also he has the highest upside in the draft the magic have been rumored for jabari and thus okc been rumored for chet but chet is number one in effective field goal percentage in all of college basketball at 68 percent he was number one in defensive rating he was number one in player efficiency rating he shot 39 percent from three at that size he plays the four and the five and oklahoma City needs a center. They need size and front court depth. They have a long-term patient rebuild. So taking the time to develop Chet the right way, who, like I said, has the most upside in the draft is an easy pick for the Thunder. The Houston Rockets at pick three probably have the easiest pick of the entire draft because they could definitely use a forward and there's three clear top prospects in Jabari, Chet, and Paolo. And they kind of just take whoever follows him. And in this case, it's Paolo Boncaro. He's the best all-around player in the draft. In my opinion, he does have some point forward potential. He's number one on my board, but he does command more of an on-ball role than Chet and Jabari do. And I think that is what separates them three in terms of team fit, even though teams at the top that are rebuilding don't want to go necessarily for team fit right away. But I think the Rockets can offer more than other teams in terms of role on day one because they don't have a true leader and ball handler and point guy, and they can have a couple guys like him and Jalen Green run it. If the Kings do stay at pick four, I think Jaden Ivey is fittable with the Aaron Fox and Davion Mitchell. Now, they did something a couple years ago when they took Davion. They had to trade Tyrese Halliburton because of it. But I think there's a way because Ivey and De'Aaron Fox would first of all be the fastest backcourt I've ever seen and one of the most athletic. But a three guard rotation of those three as the primary guards makes sense and can they run small ball lineups when they can and when they need to with those three I think it's possible and he is the best player available at pick four for sure and the Kings will definitely consider trade offers moving back moving for a vet and teams like the Wizards and Knicks who might want to move up for four and can offer guys like Kyle Kuzma and Julius Randle if that is enticing to the Kings they might try to take one of those but I think if the Kings are at pick four it's almost impossible not to take Ivy here. At pick five I have the Detroit Pistons taking Keegan Murray, one of the most efficient players in college basketball. He's the best scorer in all of power conference play at 23 points per game. He offers good lengthy defense. And Keegan being such an efficient scorer allows him to not take on too much on-ball role when he first steps into the league, but still be effective. And I think playing next to Cade makes a lot of sense and could fit perfectly. And especially if they end up moving off of Jeremy Grant and move him somewhere else, Keegan would be a perfect pick. The Pacers could go a lot of different ways here. I have them going Benedict Matherin from Arizona. He's an explosive athlete. He has elite shooting up he shot 38% from three in his two years. All at six foot seven with a seven nine wing makes his release point very tough to defend. And he has no issue shooting under pressure. And in the clutch, he showed that multiple times this year. So him projecting as a shooter, which is going to be the biggest thing to allow him to be a star in the league, I, I am pretty confident in. And the Pacers could use his unique profile in their young core with Tyrese and Duarte long term. Blazers, like the Kings, could be another team that could be shopping this pick for a win now vet because they want to make the most of the Dame era. But at pick seven here, I have them taking Shaden Sharp, the mystery man out of Kentucky. He could go as high as four or five, but I know teams are questioning his lack of play only because on top of not having any college tape, he didn't do anything at the combine. I think that is somewhat of a red flag. Nonetheless, he is a great athlete. He has a lengthy NBA physical profile. He is a smooth shot creator. And the Blazers could take a shot here for a long-term play, knowing that they will have to rebuild soon, whether it's now or in a year or two. The Pelicans near sprint to the podium for Dyson Daniels and him falling to pick eight is probably his floor. And I don't think the Pelicans will let him go past. Six foot seven guy out of the G League Ignite with one guard upside. He's the best perimeter defender in the entire class. He would play big minutes on day one coming from the G League. I think playing against NBA level competition and athletes definitely makes you more ready. And the Pelicans would love to add him as a facilitator and an elite defender that goes right along with Herb Jones and would make the Pelicans defense very scary. Pick nine for the Spurs comes relatively easy. They could go one of two ways here in my opinion, Jalen Duran or Jeremy Sohan, but I have been going with the monster center Jalen Duran. I think he has a very high floor because of how dominant he is. He's kind 
kind of like when DeAndre Ayton got drafted, maybe not as high as being considered for number one pick, but the game has changed a little bit over the course of a few years. And if you go back, DeAndre Ayton wouldn't go first pick. And I think Jalen Duren projects with a higher floor like that. He has been developing his game to modernize it with a mid-range and a consistent jumper. And I do think that projects very well in the league. He's a solid playmaker, which reminds me a little bit of Bam at a bio, a classic big with a modern twist to adapt. And I think the Spurs need the front court depth very, very much, so it's an easy pick. The Wizards need backcourt more than anything else, and whether that's going to be a classic one guard or two guard, I have them taking Johnny Davis here in this draft. He is a true pure scorer. The two guard position reminds me a little bit of Devin Booker and CJ McCollum, and I think he would develop well next to Beal because one, he would learn from him as a fellow two guard scorer, and also playing next to a scorer like that, you naturally are going to have the ball in your hands and be feeding him so you develop playmaking better. But with Johnny, I think he also has a high floor and you know what you're getting. It's a pretty good pick for the Wizards. I think the Knicks would want to go a couple of different ways here, but with with AJ Griffin falling to 11, I think it'd be hard for them not to take him with how bad they need three-point shooting. I will say with AJ's injury history, his limitations on the ball and his defensive and athletic limitations do limit his ceiling and make me a little worried for his long-term star potential, but you know what you're getting. You're getting an elite shooter who was one of the best shooters in the last few years in college basketball, all the way going back to his EYBL numbers. And like I said, if AJ Griffin falls to 11, it's almost impossible not to make the pick here, especially when you're the Knicks and you could really use him and add to the Duke core that you already have. You know the Thunder are in a little bit of a long-term unique Moneyball-esque rebuild, and Usman Jang could have the highest upside in the class. He does a little bit of everything. He shot as low as 20% to start the year, but he finished off shooting the efficient 50% range and 45% from three. So I think scouts have kind of been quieted on those concerns. And he might still be a little bit of a long-term project, but like I said, the Thunder can wait on that and work on his development. And taking him here at 12 to add to their young core makes a lot of sense. He's a six foot 10 wing, but he has playmaking ability. I think he fits into what they're making really, really well. The Hornets up at 13 and they need front court and defense. And Jeremy Sohan is one of my favorite prospects in the class. He is the true Swiss Army knife. And Sohan is the most versatile defender in the class. He can defend any position on the floor. He did that time and time again with his ability and tenacity and IQ at Baylor. He'll bring high energy and secondary playmaking also on offense, which will help LaMelo balance out the offense as well. Getting him anywhere outside the top 10, in my opinion, is a huge deal. He does have potential to have a maybe poor man's version of Scotty Barnes-esque impact and do a little bit of everything for a team and impact winning. Cavs at 14, I think could go one of two ways here in this situation, Ochai Baji or Malachi Branham, and I have been going with Ochai. Final four, most outstanding player has played his fair share of college basketball and he's super experienced and has high, really high IQ because of it. He's an elite shooter and off-ball threat. He has low usage, high efficiency. He shot 41% from three on the year and 45% in catch and shoot threes. And he'll play so easily off of a crafty guard like Darius Garland because like I said, his game IQ, he's so aware of his surroundings and he's able to find his own shots and spots to make easy looks and easy assists for his point guard. He's a good defender. He is 6'5 with a 6'10 wingspan. He's athletic and probably guard one through four and be a primary or secondary defender down the road. Overall, the goal of this pick is to have Ochai Baji help the Cavs reach the playoffs. The Hornets back up again and they took defense with 13 and they go more of the classic center and also defense at 15 with Mark Williams. They really do need a center more than anything else and they might be able to get eight in Gobert or even like a Jakob Hurdle in a trade market, but Mark Williams makes the most sense in the draft if they are drafting at 15. He has the biggest standing reach in the class. He's a true defensive anchor and paint beast, and he'll be great at pick and roll with LaMelo. Hawks are another team that we know might be trading this pick because they need to find Trey a second star, and they know that, and I have them taking Jalen Williams from Santa Clara with that goal in mind. He has been the biggest riser in the draft process, and being a second handler on the offense, I think he'll be able to do that right away. He does have some star potential. He's insanely efficient. He has good size at 6'5 with a 7'2 freakish wingspan and a Ability to play anywhere from one to three on the floor. And that would be a great pairing with Trey in early years, but in year two and three of his career with Atlanta, I think they'd be really reaping the benefits there. I mentioned Malachi Brandon before, and I have the Rockets taking him at 17. I don't think it's what they would have planned going into draft night, but when a guy like this falls this far, you almost have to take him. He might be the most efficient player in the entire draft, and it'd be a steal for Houston, and it's likely that he goes in that 10 to 16 range, but he would be a great young scoring piece to add to the Rockets' young rebuild. Bulls are a win-now team. They could definitely use instant impact, and Tari Eason is perhaps one of the best, if not the best defender in the entire class. Him falling outside anywhere on the lottery, honestly, is a steal for sure. He's going to be one of the best instant impacts on day one. Tari's presence and secondary playmaking on offense and inside scoring is exactly what Chicago needs. And I think a lot of lottery teams would have considered him too in the 10 to 14 range, but him falling here is a sign. And kind of like they stole Io DeSumo in the draft last year, they'd be doing the same with Tari Eason. T-Wolves could use a few things here at 19, but I think Marjon Bochamp's length and athleticism and good defensive upside 
upside is a really good pick. He also offers that off-ball offensive presence that makes an easy fit, and he's not going to command a crazy role, but he can be slotted in as a great cutter because that's what he does best on offense, in my opinion. He loves to get into the rim because he's a great finisher, and he plays above the rim with that athleticism. His outside shooting wasn't great for Team Ignite, but it was great in his single year at Juco, and his confidence is there showing positive signs that it could develop. And that three-ball developing is definitely the key for Marjon to outplay his value in the draft, but I would take my chances with him here. The Spurs at 20, I have them taking another G League Ignite player that is a little bit of a project, but no reason he can't score well on day one. Jaden Hardy had inefficient shooting splits in the G League, but going from high school straight to the G League to play against NBA level competition is definitely a tough transition. And I think like it did for Jalen Green, it will make him a more NBA ready player on the floor and have confidence and swagger going into it and knowing where he's going to get his spots against these NBA level athletes. And the Spurs at 20 make a lot of sense for a guy because they can wait a little bit on long term and I trust their development more than anybody else in the league. The Nuggets are a win now team and they take EJ Liddell, one of the more NBA ready players and only college upperclassmen in the first round. They'd be adding a great athlete, good outside shooter with very high upside on defending. And he's got a great motor also and at the four spot to help the Nuggets try to make a title jump is exactly what they need. They don't really have time to kind of dwindle around with these high upside players when they're wasting Nikola Jokic, the MVP's prime. The Grizzlies are at a rare stage of being young, having cap space, and also being very good. So a likely package of 22 and 29 to go trade up or go trade for a vet to try to win now a little bit makes sense. They do have a history of trading up in the draft. But at 22, if they are drafting, adding to the young core for upside while also considering a little bit of the win now is definitely the route. And I think Kendall Brown makes sense. One of the best athletes and cutters in the class. He's an off-ball player on offense, but he's a good defender. And he just has great athleticism and balance and spark to the team. And if his shot develops, 29 other teams are going to be very upset at themselves for not taking them earlier. And that's had this pick from the Harden Simmons deal, but they deferred it to 2023. So the Sixers get the pick and an instant impact is really all they need at 23. And Christian Braun would be a reach here in terms of value, but he's exactly what they need. And he does a little bit of everything. He impacts winning however he has to on the floor. We saw that in the final four on the biggest stage for Kansas. He's a solid shooter, defender. His work rate is through the roof. It makes a ton of sense in Philly. And he also has that little bit of grit that I think Philly guys play with and Philly fans would fall in love with. The Bucks love good length and athletes, and they don't need much to be honest, but Blake Wesley would be a great spark plug and athletic wing off their bench. And he's also only 19, so he is younger with a ton of upside. And I like that he had to do a lot on the ball for Notre Dame because it really developed him as a playmaker and made him better. And he's just become more comfortable running offensive sets and having the ball in his hands on low shot clocks. And I think overall, in the end of it, this could be a steal at pick 24, and he might end up being like a Jordan Poole-esque pick. Spurs are back up again at 25, and they've loved Nikola Jovic's entire process. And he is as smooth of a scorer as you will get, and all at six foot ten, it projects very well for the NBA as a perimeter forward. Defensively, he definitely needs some work, that's for sure, but you draft him for the scoring output, and at 25, it makes a lot of sense. He reminds me a lot of Danilo Gallinari and should have a solid long career. It makes a lot of sense for the European Spurs. The Mavs definitely need a center, but I haven't taken Dalen Terry here because I don't think he should go anywhere past this. I think he's that good of a player. He's one of my favorite prospects in the class, and he does everything, and I really think he's going to be the Herb Jones of this class. He has elite defensive upside. He's a great playmaker, and his energy and work rate is incredible. And the Mavs could also find a center elsewhere and adding the impact wing like DT in the draft will be much more valuable than reaching on a low ceiling center that they might be able to get in free agency or in the second round. The Heat have a history of making other teams look stupid in the draft and this could be another one because I don't think Ty Ty Washington will slip all the way to 27, but if he does, he's a great fit for the Heat. They could use another guard and they might trade for Donovan Mitchell or do something else in the offseason, but if they are drafting at 27, Ty Ty just screams Heat to me. He's a Kentucky player that is great in the pick and roll. He has a great outside shooter, solid playmaker, and Ty Ty could be another one of those Miami Heat steals long term. The Warriors probably need a center kind of like the Mavs, but just like the Mavs, why reach on them when you can get a similar impact from a guy in the second round where the Warriors have a few picks, and instead they get a great versatile upside shooting forward with Jake LaRavia from Wake Forest. Good shooter, especially from outside at that length. He's got good size and athleticism, and he should project as a solid defender and alternative playmaker on offense. And Jake's been skyrocketing up draft boards since February and since his ACC tournament play, but I think it's a good pick and he would fit very well in their role. The Grizzlies back up at 29, and I don't know if Kennedy Chandler falls this far, kind of like Ty Ty does, but he could because of his small size being a concern. And the Grizzlies could need a backup point guard, and I think Kennedy plays much bigger than his size, and more importantly, his speed, his playmaking, especially out of the lane, his finishing and tenacity will have a bigger positive impact than his sizable negative. I could see him being a lead or star guard down the road in the league for sure. We've doubted small guards like Trey Young and Jalen Brunson in the league before, and I think teams might get bit 
by not taking Ken Lee Chandler again. Thunder, after taking Chet and Jang earlier, go for a true center here, which they do desperately need. And I think Chet is more of a four, but even with that, they still need a more front court. Ismail Kamagate has raw upside from Paris basketball, but I think he is the third best true center prospect in this class after Jalen Dern and Mark Williams. Strong defensive anchor. He's got good size. He has a 7-4 wingspan, which is the opposite of the bigs OKC currently have rostered. So it would make a lot of sense for balance in that front court room. That was the full first round. And instead of going through 28 more picks like that, I'm going to show you here the entire second round and what it looks like so you can see all 58 picks. There is a ton of steel for value here, especially in the earlier part of the round. I think all the way from 31 through 35 are really good picks that could easily be first rounders. I have Leonard Miller going to the Spurs at 38 and he could decide to go to the G League Ignite instead of staying in the draft. But for now, I think that pick makes sense because the Spurs have four draft picks. They can definitely use one on a long-term risky play. There are definitely a few teams like the Warriors who have 51 and 57 or the T-Wolves who have 40, 48, and 50 who I could definitely see trading up using these picks and maybe future picks to go get another first round pick or to climb higher in the early second to get their guy. I have the Hawks taking Jalen Williams at 44 and I had the Hawks taking Jalen Williams at 16 from Santa Clara and that was completely accidental. I did not realize until after I did this, I promise. And I'll show you one more time again. Here is what the first round looks like so you can see that all together. And here are both the first and the second round, my entire two round NBA mock draft, all 58 picks. I would love to hear all your guys' thoughts, how your teams did, if you like how they drafted in this and what you think you would do differently. As always, I appreciate y'all for being here, supporting and watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more of the mock draft details and other content, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and TikTok. I post tons of content over there and you don't want to miss it.